The story opens up in Seattle where Sam, the eldest son of the Oliver family, wakes up late in the morning. He lives with his parents as he dropped out of college because he simply couldn't focus on studies. He then took up a dead-end job at the workbench, a home repair superstore. Currently, Sam spends most of his time hanging out and playing video games with his friends, Ben and Sock. Today is Sam's 21st birthday, but he doesn't feel more or less special than any other day. He puts on his work apron and heads downstairs for breakfast. He soon notices his parents who seem to be engaged in an intense conversation. When they see him, they stop talking and act uncharacteristically friendly. Mr. Oliver shakes Sam's hand while Mrs. Oliver, who seems to be on the verge of tears, hugs him tightly. Unbeknownst to Sam, the series of weird incidents has only begun. All three of them head to the kitchen where the family's younger son, Kevin, is having his breakfast. However, Sam's eyes are fixed to the TV where he sees a horrifying vision. The news reports detail a house fire that tragically claimed the lives of a family of four. He is jolted back to reality when Kevin playfully smacks the back of his head. Moments later, Sam heads to work with his best friend Bert Sok Wysocki. From their conversation it is revealed that Sam has a crush on one of their colleagues, Andy. The two friends soon arrive at work and immediately join a staff meeting. As the day goes by, Sam continues to see horrifying visions on the news which actually don't exist in real life. This also affects his work as he is caught staring mindlessly at the TV on the work floor. His manager gives him a warning, pointing out that he cannot simply cruise through life without actually doing any work. Sam gets incredibly frustrated by all the strange things that are happening to him, and decides to take a half day off from work. As he drives back home in his car, a man suddenly appears in the back seat. He introduces himself as the devil and says that he wants to talk to Sam. However, the latter is so freaked out that he crashes his car onto a roadside dustbin. He fortunately isn't hurt but when he checks the back seat, it turns out to be empty. Confused and disoriented, Sam reaches home late at night only to find his father waiting for him. Sam is surprised that he is still awake and asks if everything is okay. Mr. Oliver then drops a truth bomb on the youngster. Turns out that 22 years ago when Mr. Oliver was extremely ill, he and his wife were visited by the devil. They were given a deal, Mr. Oliver would be healthy again but in exchange he would have to submit his first child's soul to the devil. The couple were extremely desperate and agreed to this offer. This is why the devil has reappeared now, so that the Oliver family can fulfill their end of the deal. The following afternoon, the devil visits the Oliver household and has a conversation with Sam. He wants the youngster to work as his bounty hunter. Sam will be responsible for tracking down souls who have escaped from hell and capturing them. To accomplish this, he will be given a wooden box that contains something called a vessel. When it is placed near an escaped soul, the vessel activates and pulls the soul inside it. Once this is done, Sam is supposed to hand over the vessel to the local Department of Motor Vehicles, or DMV office, which is a gateway to hell. For his first task, Sam has to capture a firefighter named Ned Schmecker who used to be an arsonist before he went to hell. The devil then hands his bounty hunter a wooden box before vanishing into thin air. Later, Sam opens the box along with his friends Sock and Ben. To their surprise, the vessel is not some powerful, antique weapon but a simple hand-held vacuum cleaner. They also get horrifying news that a home, a few blocks away from workbench, caught fire earlier that day. The family of four, including two children, were killed in this incident. Sam suddenly realizes that he had seen this whole thing in his visions. He finally begins to realize that if he doesn't do his job, several innocent people will die. That night, Sam goes to the local district attorney's office, where Sock's ex-girlfriend, Jody works. He asks her for all the information on Ned Schmecker and makes a horrifying discovery. Turns out, Ned is going about setting fire to the same places that he burnt down before going to hell. His next target will be his parents' house which has now been converted into a children's hospital. Following this, Sam and Sock steal fire protection clothes from their work and head out to track the escaped soul. They soon find him on the rooftop of the children's hospital. Ned is trying to blow out the air conditioning unit when Sock confronts him. Using this distraction, Sam pulls out the handheld vacuum cleaner and switches it on. It lets out several rays of light that bind around Ned and eventually pull him inside it. The two youngsters breathe a sigh of relief as they have just saved hundreds of children from being burnt to death. The following morning, Sam heads to the local DMV office, where a receptionist seems to be waiting for him. She reveals a portal on her desk and asks Sam to put the vacuum cleaner in it. The youngster does so and the escaped soul is sent back to hell. A few days later, Sam is given yet another wooden box that contains a vessel for his next mission. However, being the lazy slacker that he is, Sam doesn't want to get right into the job. 
he tries to stall opening the box and get on with his day. Meanwhile, the town is experiencing strange and frequent power outages. Sam, Sock, and Ben are discussing the whole box thing when the lights go out suddenly. Sam switches on a torch and has a look around when he catches his reflection in the mirror. To his utter horror, his face looks like it transformed into an evil skull. The lights come back the very next second and everything goes back to normal. That night, the devil pays a visit to Sam and gives him information about the new soul he has to capture. This second soul used to be an energy salesman whose escape from hell is accompanied by electrical storms. That is why the town is experiencing sudden and frequent power outages along with strange lightning strikes. The devil also points out that every time a lightning bolt hits this town, an innocent person loses their life. Upon hearing this, the youngster finally begins to realize the severity of his work. Realizing that he cannot run away from his responsibility, Sam finally opens the wooden box with his friends. It contains a small remote-controlled monster truck and no instructions on how to use it to capture the escaped soul. Despite having no idea on how to use the vessel, Sam and his friends are quickly thrust into action. They learn from Workbench's manager that a nearby hospital has been hit by lightning and has requested two backup generators. Sam and his friends are tasked with taking these generators to the required destination. They quickly reach the hospital and see that it was hit by lightning twice. Sam also notices yet another bolt strike a few blocks away and quickly rushes to the spot. There, he sees the lifeless body of a man inside a car which was struck by lightning a few moments ago. A horrified Sam looks around and catches a glimpse of the hellish soul that is behind all this mess. The soul appears on top of a roof but quickly vanishes seconds later. The next day, Sam does a bit of research about the culprit and comes to know that his name is Arthur Ferry. He was an energy salesman who was caught selling electricity to other states illegally. Arthur died a day before he was scheduled to appear in the court for his trial. Now, he is back from hell and simply wants to kill as many people as possible. Fortunately, that very night, Sam and his friends managed to track down Arthur to a nearby hydropower project. They get decked out in rubber suits which are generally used for deep sea diving and head towards the spot. They soon reach the project's dam and sneak behind a concrete barricade. Nearby, Arthur is trying to siphon away all the power being generated in the project. Sam takes out the vessel which is in the form of a remote-controlled toy monster truck and rolls it quietly towards the hellish soul. The toy truck only travels a few feet away before a van runs over it, completely shattering it. Arthur then notices Sam lurking nearby and flees away. Unfortunately, Sam and his friends now go from being the hunters to the hunted. That night when they are planning their next move at the workbench, Arthur begins to control the store's electrical appliances. The vessel is also damaged and the youngsters are now facing an onslaught from various machines. Sam, realizing that his friends are in danger, walks out to the store's parking lot and challenges Arthur to a duel. Rather foolishly, Arthur shows up and begins to rant about how this town treated him badly. Sam quickly whips out the remote for the toy truck and captures Arthur while he is busy ranting. After completing his second task, Sam hopes to have a slightly less workload. But, his wishes are dashed out of the window when he wakes up one morning and strange things begin to happen. Everything that he puts in his mouth, from toothpaste to food, turns into a bug. He is so hungry that he tells Sock to feed him later at work. Shortly afterwards, the devil pays a visit to Sam at work and gives him a brief presentation on his next mission. He shows the youngster several photos of local women who have died in the past two months after a mysterious bug bit them. Sam asks for more information, but the devil gives him a vague reply and tells him to simply follow the bugs. The devil then leaves behind a wooden box containing the vessel, before vanishing into thin air. But, Sam doesn't have to wait too long to find out more about his next mission. He and his friends are out on lunch when they see a van from a pest control company. The van has a giant rubber bug on its roof for advertisement. Sam suddenly remembers that the devil had told him to follow the bugs. So, he along with Sock and Ben start following the pest control van. It stops a few blocks down the road near an apartment complex, and a man gets out of the vehicle. The three friends watch in horror as a swarm of strange bugs attacks the man and brutally kills him. Ben then deduces that the escaped soul must have been in the apartment complex that the pest control guy was heading to. Back at the workbench cafeteria, Andy has lunch with a guy that she met last night. Sam is returning back when he sees her happily chatting away with the new guy. He approaches them and overhears the guy tell Andy that she should quit her job and pursue her education full time. Meanwhile, Sock reveals he had stolen all the letters from the apartment complex's mailbox when they were following the pest control van earlier. He and Ben check through these letters and find a rather suspicious man, named Harold Bunsen, 
who moved there only two months ago. They need his criminal history before they can be sure if he is the soul who escaped hell. Sock, whose ex-girlfriend Jordy works in the local district attorney's office comes up with a brilliant but risky plan. Following this, Sam sneaks into Jordy's office while Sock keeps her distracted outside. They manage to print out necessary information about Bunsen and quickly head out. Turns out Bunsen was arrested several years ago for the murder of his wife. He had thrown her body into a heap of compost fertilizer where it was devoured slowly by bugs. The friends then check out the wooden box and are gobsmacked to see that the new vessel is a toaster. Nonetheless, they quickly head back to the apartment complex with the toaster and extra cable. Ben and Sock find an outlet for the cable while Sam spies on Bunsen's apartment. Sam comes across a horrifying sight. Bunsen seems to be casually eating his breakfast while a bunch of murderous bugs swarm near him. Soon, Sock and Ben, who have short-circuited the toaster, also join Sam and see the disturbing view. The trio stare mindlessly when suddenly Bunsen notices their presence. He orders the bugs to attack the youngsters, but they manage to get away. Back at work, things go from bad to worse for Sam. Andy reveals that she has decided to leave workbench to pursue her education. As if things weren't already messy enough, Sam is visited by Bunsen the next afternoon. He reveals that it wasn't him who killed his wife, the pest control guy or the three ladies. Instead, it was his ex-girlfriend Gloria, who came back from the dead recently. Bunsen warns Sam to stay away as Gloria sees everything, and is present everywhere, all the time. The camera then pans nearby and we see the swarm of bugs transform into a beautiful young woman who is intently looking at Sam. The next day, Sam and his friends head to Bunsen's apartment, decked out with pest control equipment. Sam and Ben head inside the apartment while Sock goes to the storage room to find a socket for the toaster's plug. In a shocking twist, Gloria is also in the storage room and she quickly abducts Sock as a hostage. On the other hand, Sam and Sock do not find any bugs in Bunsen's apartment. They then decide to head back and go to the storage room to pick up their friend. There, they see Gloria holding Sock as a hostage. She tells them to leave or else she will pierce Sock's throat using her swarm of bugs from hell. Right then, Bunsen also arrives in the storage room with some groceries. He begins talking to his ex-girlfriend and she pushes Sock away. This gives Sam enough time to plug in the toaster and chucks it towards Gloria. Sensing danger, Gloria begins to transform into a swarm of bugs but she is quickly captured inside the toaster. After fulfilling his duties, Sam hurries back to work and finds Andy, fully prepared to confess his love. However, she reveals that her classes have been cancelled for the semester. Their college building was reported to be filled with asbestos, and it will take several months to clean it. So, Andy will not leave work, at least, for the next six months. An extremely relieved Sam sees the devil casually sitting nearby, eavesdropping to their conversation. Everything is back to normal for a few days until weird things start happening once more. Things start mysteriously vanishing right from Sam's hand. He loses the car keys just as he is about to open his car's doors. He is forced to take a taxi to work and when he is about to pay the fare, his wallet disappears out of his hand. All these things start appearing in weird plates one by one. Ben finds the car keys in his pocket while Sam's wallet is later found inside a paint box. On top of this all, the new wooden box appears right in the middle of Workbench's storage unit. Sam is about to open it along with his friends when something from the inside begins to rattle. It is almost as if the box contains some living animal inside it. Later that day, the devil pays a visit to Sam at his work and transports them straight to the site of an accident. A red truck carrying apples has crashed onto a tree, and the poor driver is dead. However, the devil reveals that an escaped soul, named Belafir, was responsible for this death. If Sam does not capture the soul quickly, more innocent people will die. A somber Sam then heads back to work and summons the courage to open Devil's wooden box. He and his friends cautiously break the lock only to discover a white dove inside. This is supposed to be their new vessel to capture the escaped soul. On the other hand, the boys also managed to track down someone named Belafir. Apparently, he was a magician from the early 1900 seconds who had huge ambitions. He murdered a member of the audience during one of his sets and later hanged himself before appearing in court. He has now come back and is killing people left, right, and center. Rather curiously, there is a carnival that has recently arrived in town. One of the top shows in it is a British magician who does extremely complicate tricks. So, Sam and his friends head to the carnival and attend the magic show. They are stunned to see the magician levitating a real sword right in front of everyone. However, the magician also seems to be extremely arrogant and lashes at the audience when they do not give him a standing ovation. He then calls out a man from the audience so that he can prove to everyone that he is the greatest magician who ever lived. The magician takes his sword and stabs it through the man's abdomen. When he takes the sword out, 
The man seems to be completely fine with no signs of injury. Shortly after the magic set is over, Sam and his friends see the same man lying dead outside. The paramedics say he had massive internal injuries as if he was hit by a car. This incident makes it clear to Sam that this magician is the one they are looking for. However, the devil throws a little spice in this whole mission so that he can motivate Sam to do his work faster. He visits Andy at work and hands her a ticket to the magician's next show. When Sam Al comes to know about this, he leaves work before lunchtime and rushes to the nearby carnival. He finds Andy completely engrossed in the sword levitating act. Sam tries to make her leave by suggesting the magician sucks. Unfortunately, the magician hears this and asks Sam to join him on stage. The youngster, who knows what is about to happen, grabs the magician's sword and bolts away from the carnival. Following this, a chase ensues and the magician is able to get back his sword using dark magic. He tries to impale Sam with the sword but in this crucial moment, Sock and Ben arrive with the dove. The friends watch in utter surprise as the small, cute dove transforms into a huge flock of several birds. The flock then descends on the magician and imprisons him in the cage. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave 1000 likes or 100 comments if you'd like us to continue part 2. Thank you.